Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. I've got a great lesson that I'm just so excited to start teaching you. It's about adding and subtracting fractions. And let me tell you, some of you might be a review, and others of you it might be almost like the first time, and that's okay. But you all have one thing in common, and that's the note package that you would have downloaded off my website. And if you can't access that for whatever reason, then you're improvising with your own notes, but you're all taking notes on this video here. So let's get started. Adding and subtracting fractions. Before we begin, let's make sure we check this off here. Make sure you have the background knowledge to understand what I'm about to tell you. So the first thing you got to ask yourself is, do you know how to write the multiples of a number? Let me get out my laser pointer here so you can see where I'm pointing at. Do you know how to write the multiples of a number? If you don't, then you're going to go back and you know find a YouTube video that explains it. If you know what to do, then put a check mark. Like actually do it. Actually put the check mark in there. All right, let's move to the next part. I know how to reduce a fraction. If you know how to do that, good for you. Put a check mark. And if you got two check marks, you're ready to go. If not, do not pass go yet. Go and review the stuff. Let's get started here. Add and subtract like denominators. That's the first part here. And what does that mean? You see these two fractions here? We got three fifths and we got one fifth. We're going to add them. And the key here, look at the denominators. They match. They're like denominators. They're alike. Now, if they're alike, it's pretty simple. You just add the numerators and you leave the denominators alone. You leave them five. Don't add the denominators. Leave them alone. So you get four, four fifths. Let's see it properly. Don't say four over five. The cool kids don't say four over five. The cool kids say four fifths. You want to be like them, you got to say it properly. So we got four fifths as our answer and that's where we leave it alone. We don't touch it after that. Now you got to ask yourself, can you reduce these two? And uh, I think there's, uh, there's nothing really that divides into both. So we'll move on. You know why I wrote this down? That's not because it's the right way to do it. Four tenths. That's because this is a common error. People will add the numerators and the denominators. Then they'll get the wrong answer. And you don't want to get the wrong answer. This is wrong. Here's another one. Three fifths subtracted by one fifth. It's the same idea. Subtract the numerators. Leave the denominator alone. Don't subtract the denominator. Don't do this. Oh, wait. Let's see if we can reduce first. Can we reduce? No, we can't. Don't do that. Don't subtract the denominators and get zero. If you ever get, by the way, if you ever get zero in any question as a denominator, you did something wrong because zeros are not allowed in fractions on a denominator. You can put them in the numerator. You just can't put them in the denominator. It's, it's like forbidden territory. So don't do that. You know you did it wrong if that's what you get. By the way, this is wrong. Now what if the denominators are unlike? What if they're like this? One-fourth and one-third. Well, what we want to think about now is to turn it into a, a question that has like denominators. So here's what we do. What I like to do is I look at the bigger number the four, and I list the multiples. So take the four, just list a bunch of multiples of four. Then take the smaller number and start listing multiples until you get a matching number. I'm going to snap my fingers. That means you got a matching. If you snap your fingers, it means it matches. So look, aha, snap. I stop at 12 because look, I got a 12 and a 12. Oh yeah, baby, you got 12. You know what that 12 means? It means you got to turn both of them into 12 because they can both turn into 12. So you got to pick a number that multiplies both of them to make 12. And here's what we get. Times it by 3. Times it by 4. But we don't stop there. You know what we do? You got to do the same to the top. Yeah, you times this by 3. You got to times that by 3 to preserve the equality. You want to make another fraction that's equivalent to 1 fourth. And... You want to make another fraction equivalent to one third. So you got to do the same to the top. Okay, so they have to match. Now this is what we get for the first one. One fourth turns into three twelfths. One third becomes four over twelve or four twelfths, say it properly. And then you get an equal sign. 
Now it looks like the questions we saw on the last page. You just add the numerators. You get seven. Yes. Oh, don't. Okay. Yeah. You don't add the denominators. You keep it 12. Now ask yourself, can you reduce this? Not at all. But you know what some people will do? They'll write 7 24 because they'll get, they'll go this far. You know, good for them. We can clap for them. You know, they, they made it this far, but they messed up on the denominator. They added them. Don't add the denominators when you're adding fractions. You know what some people will do with this one? Is they will write, they'll add these two, and then they'll just add these two. They won't even bother making uh, common denominators. They'll just say two sevens. The thing that's that easy. Well, it's not that easy. If you do it this way, oh my God, I'm going to be so upset. I'll, I'll be so sad. I'll be so, so, so sad. You know why? Because I believe in you. You're way better than that than just to add den denominators and the numerators. We're way better than that. We're in grade like eight now, or some of you in grade seven. Some parts of the world, they do this in grade four. That's crazy. All right, subtracting fractions. We got three-fifths. It's no different, guys. The only difference is the subtraction sign. So pick the bigger number. Circle it. List the multiples. Yeah, that's it. Now, if you want to make the sound effects with your mouth, go ahead. If not, let's move on to the four. Go put it there. And just list the multiples and then snap your fingers when you get a match. There, done. We got a match. It's 20. Now let me ask you something. I'm talking to you directly. I'm talking to you personally right now. What does that 20 mean? Yeah. If you said that's the number we have to turn him into, you should like pat your shoulder. Yeah, give your shoulder a pat. Now look, you got times four. You got times that by five. That's how you turn these to 20s. Nothing else will turn them into 20s. Make sure you do the same to the top. And this one, what do we put here? Times five, good. Now just multiply all these numbers and write the new fractions. That's it. You see how easy this is? Now you just subtract the numerators. You get two. Subtract the denominators. No! Don't subtract the denominators. I hope you screamed at the mic, at the computer screen just like how I screamed back at you right now. You don't subtract the denominators. You just keep moving. You leave it alone. Can we do it? Yep, we can. Yeah. I like when we can reduce. You know what goes? Yep. Divide by two. Two goes in a bowl. This makes uh, two divided by two is one. 20 divided by 2. Are we allowed to change the denominator now? Yes, you can. Because you're reducing the fraction. Whatever you reduce by, you have to do it to both numbers to keep the balance and equivalency. So now we get 1 over 10. That's the only time the denominator will change is on the last step when you have to reduce. Remember that. Write it down in your notes. I'm saying a lot of words. You should be writing this stuff down, stuff that matters. Common error. I'll be so sad if anybody does this. If you want to make Mr. Malham sad, you do this common error here, which is subtract the numerators and then subtract the denominators. You get one over one. I'll be so sad. Common error number two. You'll get this far. I'll give you a clap for that. You'll get some part marks, but you, uh, you'll mess up the... Den oh, yeah, we don't do that. That's the right answer. Now, if you leave it in this form, you'll lose some marks. You might lose half a mark because you got to reduce your fractions. Even if I don't tell you, make sure you're reducing your fractions. It's good for you. Now, subtracting fractions, unlike denominators, again, a little bit of a harder question. I recommend you pause this video and see if you can avoid my two common errors. See if you can get the right answer without messing up and check to see if you can reduce it the last step. Go for it. I'm going to start. Bigger number. That's step one. List out the multiples. Smaller number. List out its multiples. Whew, that's a lot of numbers. You probably realize that. You got to go quite far to get to that matching. Then you, you snap your fingers. You get 60s. Now we can turn them both into 60. Okay, so what do we got to multiply by? Let's see, 15 times. Well, you listed the multiples. You know what you got to times by. Look, 1, 2, 3, 4. You got four numbers. So times this by 4. What about times this by? Look at all these. 4 times 
15 of them. Yeah, he's got to do his part too. I forgot. So times that by four. Don't be shy. And then times that by 15. You know, you're good at it. You could do that. Times that by four to match them up. That's it. Now write your new numbers. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Did you subtract these? Did you subtract? Yeah, good. You didn't subtract the denominators. I like that. Two out of 60. I hope you didn't subtract the denominators. I can't really see what you're doing, but you, I, I'll trust you on it. Now reduce if necessary. Okay, here's the part here. If that was your final answer, you're gonna dock half a mark off because you gotta reduce it and this can be reduced. Cut them in half, both of them. Oops, I went too far here. Let me go back. 130th. That's the right answer. That's for full marks. You should clap, maybe celebrate, maybe turn off the computer now if you don't want to see the rest of this. I'm pretty much done here. I just want to show you come the, the, the two errors that happen a lot. One is 6 out of 11 or 6 elevenths. People will subtract these. The one that makes Mr. Milham sad, subtract, we don't do that. And the other mistake, they'll get this far and they'll just subtract them. They'll subtract both of them. Makes me sad again. Can't have zero as a denominator. You know how it is. This is the only correct answer. Right here. Thanks for watching, guys.